Almost every application needs to have buttons. And in this video, we're going to see how to use buttons in WPF so that we can click on them and then do something once we clicked on them. And we're going to see how to use events, at least in a very basic manner. There is a video on events coming out later, which will cover events in a lot more depth because there's a lot more to know about events than just implementing an event for a button click but we're going to at least see how to do that and it will be very helpful for you in general if you want to use events in other control elements as well by the way if you like what you're seeing the please hit the like button it really helps us out my name is Dennis Panuta by the way and I tell you let's get started Buttons are super important because they allow us to interact with our software and I'm going to call this one button demo and I'm just going to keep it simple basically creating a new button in here actually let me use a stack panel here as well so I'm going to use a button and this button now can have a value for example the text that you want to display so it will be the content. So you can either put it here inside of the button tag. You could say, click me. And that will then be displayed inside of the button. So you can see it takes the whole width because we're in a stack panel. We can also change the size of that button. For example, the width, let's say we would make this button 100 pixels wide and we set the height to something like 30. Okay, so this would be now our click me button and it's inside of the stack panel. So it's going to be assigned towards the top center by default. So let me change the size of my main window a little bit. This will be something like 300 times 300, for example. Okay, so now I have this button and once you click on the button, I want something to happen because otherwise it's basically useless, right? So we need to look at events if we want to do anything. And now what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to use a label which will have the content of hello world. And I'm going to give this label a name as well so that I can access it later on. So let me call this one my label. And once I click on this button, I want my label to change. Okay, so I want to change, for example, the foreground. So the color of my label. Okay, so therefore, what I will do is I'm going to use an event here. And in order to use the best event for buttons, you should use the click event because that's basically going to be executed once you click on that button. And here you can either manually create an event handler or you can just use the IDE for that. So I'm going to create a new event handler by clicking on this and it will create a new button click event for me. Now, if I gave this button a name, Let's say I call this button name my button and I would create a new event here. It would call it my button underscore click. Okay. So once you do these things, you will see that in your code behind, the events will be created for you. Now I created two events, one which is not the one that I'm using here. I'm using the button click here. I'm not using the my button click. So I should definitely get rid of this one because otherwise my software will crash. So never have events defined which aren't going to be used in your XAML file because otherwise your application will crash. Okay, so this will now be called whenever we click on a button. So I want to now change my label dot foreground. So the color of my label, because my label has a foreground property, you can access all of the properties that your UI elements have. For example, I can change the foreground, which will change the color. So let's say it is beige by default. It will just be this hello world beige. Maybe we should use black instead. Okay, so it will be black by default. And then I can override it once I click on the button. So I'm going to set the foreground to a different color and this will be brushes, which I can then change the color to, let's say, coral. Okay, so now let's run our application and see what's gonna happen there. So there we have our simple app. 
Let me click on it. You can see it changed the color to coral, so to this reddish color. Okay, so what we can do is we can also, let's say we want to change the size of our My Label. So My Label has a font size. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this foreground. I don't need it. I'm going to assign a font size of, let's say, 16. And now I would like you to access this font size, get its value, and increase it by one each time that we click on the button. Okay, so pause the video and try this for yourself, please. Okay, I hope you tried it. So I'm not going to change the color this time. I'm going to change the font size. So here, font size. Okay, let's look at what is font size going to be. You can see it's a double. Okay, so let me create a new variable. My, oh, like this, double my font size will be my label font size. So whatever we get from my label as the font size, that's what we're going to store in this variable at that point. And then we're going to assign a new font size to it. So my label font size, and this should be font size here, will be the old font size plus one. Okay, so this will increase the font size by one each time that we click on the button. So let's run this application real quick and see what our button is going to do. And you can see each time I click on this button, the text gets bigger because I'm changing the font size. All right, and that is basically how you can implement click events. There are more events that you can use. Okay, so let's quickly look at some of the events that might be interesting for a button. So here, let's look at click. And you can see you have mouse double click, for example. Okay, so let me use mouse double click and create a new event for that. My button mouse double click. So I created a new event here, which let's say we use the same idea here. We get the font size, but now if we double click, we reduce it by one. Okay, so we decrease the font size by one. Let me run this again. Quick pause. This video is sponsored by one of my courses. So you're learning something about WPF in this video and I have a complete C-Sharp masterclass which teaches you a lot more about C-Sharp if you feel like you need to learn more about C-Sharp to understand everything that's going on. And then if you want to learn everything you need to know about WPF, definitely check out my WPF course. It's a 15 hour course which will teach you everything you need to know about WPF, building an entire Windows Store clone using my apps in order to achieve this Metro design, which is the design language, so to speak, for the latest Windows 10 applications. You can find a link in the description down below and there you get a huge discount. So don't miss out, get one of the courses or both of them now. And now let's get back to the video. And let's see if I can actually double click quickly enough. So you can see, if I double click, <laughs> I'm just too slow. The thing is I'm overwriting my clicking. You see, I'm increasing and at the same time decreasing. So now I have both events which basically <laughs> counteract each other. If I'm quick enough, I'm increasing it, but at the same time decreasing it by double clicking because each click is going to increase, but the double click is going to decrease the font size. Okay, but you can now see that you can actually access the font, well, the, the double click event as well to make a change. You can, of course, also design a button. Okay, so for example, if you want to change the background color of the button, you could do that. So let's say you want to use coral as the background and then another text color, you would set the foreground. So let's say we use blue here as the foreground. So there we are, we have changed the button color. You will also see that there are a bunch of interesting events here like mouse enter, mouse leave. So let's implement this mouse enter event. I'm going to create a new one, mouse enter, and I'm going to use one for mouse leave. Okay, so here, new event handler for mouse leave, like so. And now 
we can see that we have two events now. And what I'm going to do is each time that I'm entering the button, so to speak, with my mouse, I'm going to change the color of my label. So I'm going to change the foreground to be, let's say, brushes dot, and it's going to be white because then it will basically be invisible <laughs> because white on white background is going to make it pretty invisible. And once I leave the mouse or I leave the button with my mouse, I'm going to put it back to a black text. Okay, let's run this real quick and hover over the mouse. You can see it seems like the text is disappearing, but it's not really disappearing. It's just changing its color. All right, so this is basically what you can do with buttons. You can, there is a lot more, of course. You can see there are a bunch of events. You can design the button with all of the properties that there are. You can add a tooltip once you hover over it, for example. So let's add a tooltip. I'm your best button, for example, is the tooltip that I would now get once I hover over the button. So we're getting multiple things happening once we hover over. You can see I'm getting this I'm your best button info as well as triggering the other event, this mouse enter event that we have implemented. All right. So at this point, I would recommend to play around with buttons a little bit, to play around with the properties. You can play around with all of the font properties, for example. So for example, the font style, you could make it italic or the font, what is it? Weight here, you could make it bold, for example. And I would really recommend to just play around with it. Thanks for watching another part of our WPF series. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like. And if you loved it, then leave a sub. And also check out the next video in the series. You can always refer back to the playlist to find the next video that will help you out with WPF. And also, if you want to become a real pro in WPF, then check out the link in the description to get the full course.